Konnichiwa, Samurai James here. In this video, it's going to be part one of a three-part series in which I'm reviewing my green armor from Iron Mountain Armory. This video is going to be about the lower body. Part one, the lower leg armor. Now these plates are a black Uzumaki finish. It's a textured black that's got a little bit of a gloss to it, and so not so much a gloss or a matte, sort of a semi-gloss. You can see how it'll show the pattern in the light. I chose this texture because it looks very similar to Urushi having a little bit of that wave pattern to it. It doesn't look so flat and plasticky. And for these, since I had my armor upgraded to the Taisho class, even though this armor is normally listed as a Gashira, which is a mid-tier, I did request updating to the highest class. Because of that, I have the Art Silk here on the liner, and it's the same fabric for the whole suit. It's pretty well stitched around the outsides. You can see there's a small set of stitches here as you go up and down for it to be stitched down with. The lacing here at the top and the bottom passes through the plate through a set of holes, but there's no knot on the inside. This fabric liner, the Kayahan, keeps it from being a small knot inside of here that would be rubbing on your leg that could be uncomfortable. Lower end Suniate that may have had simply the steel part to it, you could have a separate set of Kayahan. Or, if you were just bundling up your Hakama, it could still be comfortable like that. Now these are what Iron Mountain Armory calls the heavy style. That's a solid steel plate at the bottom and solid steel at the top. This is a three-piece plate, just like they would be in many suits historically for something of this design. There's a center plate here and one on each side. The same follows through with the knee up above, so there's a center and one on each side. And when you're wearing it, the one with the taller edge here is the one that goes to the outside of the leg to provide a little bit more coverage and to keep from getting in the way as much on the inside. Now, as far as quality for a reproduction, these are excellent. The sewing is very well done. There's no loose or frayed edges. For this armor, I'm reviewing after owning it and wearing it for three years, so there is a bit of wear and tear to it, and I will point that out accordingly. Uh, the stitching here, it's nicely done all the way around the inside. The stitches are folded over so there's not much of a visible seam line around it. It's just very, very well done. It's also painted on the inside, which is nice to keep it from rusting since it's not stainless steel, nor would it have been historically, but having it painted on the inside ensures that it helps prevent rust as best as possible. Now one of the nice things with Iron Mountain Armory, of course, is that you get to choose a different uh, set of options for customizing things. I had the laces chosen here, which they've also used for doing the little knots to hold it on here and also for holding these top pieces in place as well. These could have been simply black or something, but having it in a nice dark green like that helps it stand out a little bit. Again, very, very smooth here. There's no problems with running my fingers up and down it. There's no sharp edges. There's nothing that you're gonna get cut on or that's gonna excessively wear on your fabric. Next up is gonna be the high date, but before that, I'm gonna show you some close-up pictures of the Suniate. Next up is the Haidate. Mine is the Kiritsuki Kozani, which is a simulated plate of scales by having the wavy edge at the top. However, this is a solid plate going all the way across. And what that means is it doesn't really move left and right, and it doesn't really move that much top to bottom. There is a bit of flexibility, but even with the historical armors, once they were laced together, they actually called them boards in some cases. They were meant to be stiff. I didn't quite like that so much on this, and what it had was an effect of taking my thigh curvature like this and making the armor stick straight out like that. So I actually bent these slightly by hand just by putting it over my thigh and kind of gently curving it around. It hasn't caused any problems with the paint or anything else, but it fits a little bit better and I don't feel as much tension on my thighs when I'm wearing them. So that's one small improvement that I think would definitely help for producing the armor going forwards. Uh, but some people may like it flat, because when it's flat, it sits really well against the Yoroi Bitsu, so I can see it either way. Myself, since I like to wear it, I wanted something that would be more comfortable when wearing it. 
Other styles where you see the little small individual plates, they will move more fluidly so it's not really an issue for them. So it's more of a style choice in this one. The padding around the edges is something that was a lot more popular in the Edo period as armor became more of a fashion accessory rather than a tool for war. In the earlier days, samurai didn't seem to like wearing hadate at all, so many of them simply didn't. I think during the Sengoku period, there was a lot of hadate that simply didn't have this edging to it. And when I bought this, there wasn't two different options for it, but they do have an option now through Iron Mountain Armory where you can choose with or without the padding. If you're going for something that's more of a warlike suit from the Sengoku period, I would actually say get it without the padded edge. I don't personally mind it, and I really like that since these are solid plates all the way across, it really shows off the fabric and pulls together with the design of the rest of the armor. Without this, since so much of this is hidden, then you wouldn't really see a lot of the fabric. Now as far as the quality, it's got the same black Uzumaki finish as the rest of the suit since it was ordered all at once. The knots are very well done. You don't have that X's and railroads tracks going on. There's nice scalloping edges here, but you can see as I run my finger across, none of these are sharp, so I'm not going to get cut by anything, which is great. Uh, it's really smooth around the edges here, even where there's the padded edge. This is not a sharp edge here, so I also don't have to worry about getting cut, nor do I have to worry about it wearing through the fabric excessively. Materials quality, of course, is the same as the rest of the suit. I really like the art silk all the way around the edges for it. It would be nice to have real, real silk for the lacing, but I understand that would be incredibly cost prohibitive, like $1,000 or more, uh, just to upgrade to real, real silk for that. So I understand based on that price point, and that would have put it out of my budget, so this is perfectly fine. I like the little details on having the Hishinui, the bottom here with the alternating rather than the squares on top of each other. So even though there's a full set across here, you can see they have the side edges and going across, and that's a nice little detail. Now with this one being Taisho class, there are also neat little bits to it. I have the pattern Igawa here, which is based off of an actual historical pattern. I have Jabara Fusi, which is the decorative rope going along the edges here which is in green, white, gold, and black, which is great for the color combinations that I chose for the armor. The Taisho class one also comes with the holes here, which sometimes you can use for pushing the laces through to tie it off in the front, but historically, uh, the way I understand it is that it was used for putting your riding crop through or your whip for when you were riding on a horse. Now this one also has the leather tab in the center here, which is sewn down nicely. It's got a pair of holes to put through with the lacing, and I've added this shoelace for now until I get some Adoshi in place. And this is used to pull it up over your head or your neck, your shoulder, to keep it in place to help keep it from sagging. And it's a really nice little detail because one issue that I did have with my Hadate sometimes is due to my body shape and uh, my midsection being slightly rounded, the Hadate, as I would wear them over the course of a few hours, would start to work their way down and sag. And at that point, it kind of ruins the appearance to them. Now, a second thing that also helps keep the Hadate in place is on this Taisho class armor, they have a set of straps to go around the back that has a button on them, which is a toggle, just like on the top of the straps for the Watagami. And you may think to yourself, well, this doesn't seem right. Did the Japanese have toggles like this and buttons? They did. They just didn't use buttons very frequently. So either a toggle or a button would be perfectly fine. And this is a really nice thing to help keep it from flopping around on your thigh. Especially nice in this style of armor where it's one solid plate because every time I move my leg, it wants to flop forward, so having that strap in place does wonders. <laughs> Ironically, my first samurai armor that I got from Iron Mountain Armory did not have straps around the back because I got it 11 or 12 years ago, so I'm constantly, constantly forgetting to put the straps on on this one, but when I remember to do it, you can actually tell the difference in it. Let's get some close-up details of the armor for you now. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, they're going to be linked down below for the full playlist of all three parts of this series. If you found this informative, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. This is Samurai James saying thanks for watching and sayonara.